hello world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is a Tony Award winning actress. You've seen her on Broadway in West Side Story and of course in The Heights. Uh, you can currently catch her starring as Satine in the Broadway adaptation of Baz Luhrmann's 2001 hit Moulin Rouge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the absurdly talented Karen Olivo. Come on, do it up. Hi guys, what's up? Oh my goodness, so excited you're here. You are amazing. Uh, Thank I you. mean, in this show, but in general, you're pretty amazing. So it's awesome to have you here. Very excited to have you on the show. How are you doing? How is life for Karen right now? You know, a dream. Yeah. Truly. Yeah, it's a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky to be in the show. It's, it's such a party. Yeah, it looks like it. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. It looks like an absolute party. Yeah, I work with some of the best performers, people yeah. at the top of their game. Unreal. Going to work every day is a joy. Yeah. We make people happy. Like, that's, you that's know. That's it. That's literally the dream. What's it been like seeing, because it's been, what, since, like, June, I think, it opened officially in Broadway, right? Yeah, uh, I feel like June. end of July. End of July. Opened. We previewed in June. Previewed yeah. in June, opened yeah. in July. Yeah. Uh, but since then, it's been out for a minute. People are getting to see it. The, the response has been unbelievable. People love this show. People right. are talking about it. There's fan art. There's all kinds of stuff. What's it like to see that excitement around a production that you're in? You know, it's funny. When you build something, you don't know how it's going to be received. You have the best intentions. Um, I was a fan of the movie, so I was hoping that people who were fans of the movie would come and love it as much as I love the movie. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised. You know, I don't, I can't see much of the audience, but at the end of the show, there's like a couple of moments where the light, sort of cross light, shows the audience. And to see people with their mouths open, looking like they've just ridden a roller coaster, it's, it's pretty special. It's pretty cool. The show is a ride, for sure. You know, yeah. you, you mentioned, because that's a big deal, right, that there are fans of the movies. They, they come in with a, sort of a expectations already set from years of loving this story and loving oh, yeah. the songs and all of this. So was that a little scary at first, to, to try to meet that or exceed it and show them you're doing your own thing? Uh, I would say scary is not the word. I felt more anticipation. I... Because I, you know, I wouldn't have signed on to the project because I was a fan. I would never have signed on to the project if I'd read the script and thought, well, that's not the kind of thing. Yeah. I don't want to be the patron who's like, boo, you ruined my movie, you know? Exactly. So um, I was like, if we, everyone on board loved it so much and we had Baz and CM's, you know, support the entire time, yeah. I had this feeling like we can't really fail because we all love it. And we're, How we're often, paying homage in a yeah, way. Yeah, for sure. How often does that happen where you're a part of a project where everyone loves it, everyone involved? I try to only sign on to things right. where everyone, like where my gut is like, you want to be with these people and you want to create, create art. Yeah, you have to. Because it's too hard what we do to be in a room full of people who don't want to do the same thing. No, that's a that's a bad room to put yourself in, especially uh, with this medium. You're going to be with those people very close quarters for so a very hours. long time. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of time hours. is going to be spent. So that's important to weed that out. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that you were a fan of the film. I'm curious because, like, I think a thing that's really easy to forget, especially for younger people, there's so there's a lot of like jukebox style musicals that exist nowadays. But this was like one of the first, if not, this was a game changer when this movie came out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, like, what was your relationship with the original? Where were you twenty some odd years ago when this came out? Uh, I think I was living in maybe New Jersey in a house, just like an, a working actor. Um, I remember seeing it though and thinking, oh my God, someone has made a contemporary version of my medium for the film. Like that, you know, other than like the old movie musicals, I don't think that I'd ever seen anyone really get it right. And so, you know, as a performer, I was like, I can't believe they did it. And it became a, you know, a fast favorite. I had like a, like a wall size poster of the two of them in that iconic embrace. Like in my dining room. <laughs> like I'm a fan. I'm like a fan fan. Yeah. Like above where you eat. Yes. This is where that's you walk in much. the front door of the dining room and it was just like Satine and Christian, like Of course, of course. Well, I, and I think, too, more so than most movies, you could do that. Uh, that that makes sense. That's not as crazy as that sounds at first, because it was such a beautiful film, and so, some of the imagery really was iconic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also, you know, when you're in our medium, when people pay homage to your medium, you're like, oh, wow, look at that. You know, because I'm a patron of the arts. I go see movies, you know? And, you know, 
and popular music is something that, you know, we all, we sort of, and when someone sort of reaches over the aisle and goes, hey, I get you, and I'm, I'm making a spin on what you do, it's like a really wonderful, like, oh, we're all part of the same artistic family, in a way. So that begs the question, uh, when you see something like that and it's so important to you, how did you then come in? Because you've been with this since the very beginning. You've originated this role in, in yeah, Prof, then, right? Yeah, like the workshop. Yeah. Right. So how do you come in and make your version and find your version of Satine? Well, you know, it, they made it easier for me because they they looked at other kinds of Satines. Like they they let it be known that they were not trying to recreate yeah. Nicole Kidman's Satine, because that's yeah. Nicole Kidman, exactly. right? So they had let it. They had been looking for people who would uh, create a grittier, sort of mere, more realistic. Yeah. You know, Satine's a sex worker. Like, yeah. let's just be honest. So um, they were looking for something like that, and once that sort of idea of what Nicole Kidman had done so brilliantly in the movie was set aside, I was like, oh, then I got it. Yeah. Like. You give me the words, and you know the score is actually something that is just as important as the words in our show. Even though it's all popular music, Justin Levine, who is our our music supervisor, found pop songs that would really help promote story. Right. It drives the narrative. So he picked certain verses and certain styles of music to really help tell the story, and that. Once, you know, the map was set, I was like, I got it. You know, this, this journey is going to be a little bit easier. One of the things I was curious about with that, because you're right, it's done. It's very well done. And, uh, and keep me honest, more so than any other project I think you've been a part of, this in includes a lot of contemporary pop music. Right. Right? So I was curious, does that at first kind of take you out of it? Because you know you have such a connection to these songs prior to this show. So you it takes you a minute think. to like... <laughs> I am, I'm someone who still listens to like Depeche Mode and The Cure. So like I am, I was not well versed in a lot of the pop music. Like I had to learn Firework. No way. How did you, that song was everywhere. How did you? I, like I said, like <laughs> That's I listen to what I want to listen to. Yeah. And like, I also love a lot of folk music like Martin Sexton and things, yeah. you know, I still listen to the Indigo Girls. So they were like, you're going to sing Firework. And they were like, and I was like, cool, where can I get that? Yeah, what's that? What's a firework? Are you going to plunk that out for me? <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of the pressure of like that. I didn't know it in the way that other people know it. So that alleviated a lot of that for me. That's pretty amazing. And then the words became more important. And that, I think that's the other thing. Like you think of that song and you think of it being something very specific that you're screaming in your car as you're like, you know. Exactly. That was it. Because people have like attachments to moments already in their lives with those songs. Yeah. But that's why Justin Levine is so brilliant. He was like, no, the words actually mean something very specific. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's pretty outstanding. How much would you say this show has evolved from since you've been with it from the very beginning? What's the biggest change that you've witnessed take place? I would say we just removed a handful of songs. That's really, yeah. Because we, I mean, they, you know, Alex Timbers, he doesn't do anything half. Right. You know, he had, he had done so much research and he had amass this team of like superstars that once we started building it it was only like amping every idea we were like okay that's a good idea can we make it better and it just kept going up and up and up so when we even when we went to Boston we cut like a song or two and we like rearranged a handful of things but we were always going in the right direction so we didn't have to like pull it apart and remount it for Broadway as a fan of the original, was it fun to find those new things and expand on the story and play in the sandbox? Like, I'm thinking in particular, the, sort of the triangle between Satine, Christian, and the Duke. Like, there's there's a lot more tension there than I think we get in the film. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, what was it like? Yeah. What was it like kind of building that up and working on that and, and playing in that universe? Well, you know, they in the same way that they sort of reimagined Satine, they did the same for the Duke. So Tam Mutu is nothing like the Duke that you would see in the movie. And because they wanted to make him a viable option for her. Exactly. 
And when you go from having someone who wants, in the movie, Satine wants to be an actress and leave the Moulin Rouge. And in our version, she wants to keep the doors of the Moulin Rouge open because it keeps her family together, the only family that she's ever had. And so stability becomes you know, what she's working from. And so when you give her the Duke, who's like, I'll give you stability. And it's also in a Tam Mutu, like gorgeous, you know, like package, then it becomes something that she can actually look at. Do I follow my heart or do I follow my head? And we're still looking, you know, we're still digging. Tam and Aaron and I are, you know, we've had a long run. And so we're still getting down and figuring out new ways of approaching scenes. And so, Exciting. It's never that, really done. That, <laughs> like if you saw the show in previews and you came back now, you'd be like, oh, that's a different take. It's a different take. Same words, same beats, but that's a different way of looking at it. Is that not only part of the fun, but is it also uh, necessary because you're doing this have show? To. You have to keep it fresh for you to keep it exciting for you guys. Well, you know, you've seen a Broadway show where you're like, they've been doing this for too long. <laughs> yeah. I'm a patron. I go see, I see shows all the time. I'm like, ah. You know? So I don't ever yeah, want to be that. No. I don't ever want to be that. And luckily, this show demands so much of our focus, and it is such a powerhouse roller coaster that you have to devote yourself every single night 110%, or else it doesn't, it doesn't come off the ground. Like, you just, it fails. Yeah. You can feel that. You feel that energy. You know, and the choreography is incredible. Everything about this show is just top notch. And I, I remember uh, Nicole Kidman very famously like broke a rib doing the choreography. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I was going to ask. I don't think you've broken anything. Not really an option for you guys to break stuff here. No. But you're obviously pushing yourselves to the limit. And like, how do you maintain that? How do you uh, keep yourself in, in order so you can do that night after night? There's a lot of training that goes into it. I mean, I trained for eight months before I even started rehearsals. And then once I got in, you know, there's a little bit of trapeze work. So then I had to go into training for that while we were doing rehearsals for the show. But then there's maintenance too, right? So like anytime you do like a workout, your body becomes sort of used to that workout and then you stop building mass, right? So the show has now become like that workout for me. So now I still have to train outside of that so that I stay strong. And so there's acupuncture, there's massage therapy, there's vocal massage. There's so many things that go into it. So it, I can still give the same level of performance. How excited are you to have trapeze work on your resume now? <laughs> Not really, because someone's gonna ask me to do it and I'm gonna be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's pretty outstanding. I'll sing something for you, please. Uh, you, <laughs> you did something that uh, I thought was incredible around 2013-ish, where you just kind of like, you'd won your award, you made your mark and you were like, you know what? I'm going to do something for me and I'm going to take some time and just kind of walk away. Yeah. And you like took up teaching and pottery and all this stuff and just like took time for you, which yeah. I don't know a lot of people that have ever done that much less been in your position and had the, the, no. the, the strength to do that. Cause it's not an easy thing to do. What inspired you to do that and, and focus on yourself? Well, I noticed that there was a lot of things that were lacking in my work. I realized that, you know, we give everything and you know, I was sort of depleting the tank and nothing else was really going in and I was giving a lot more than I actually had. And I realized that I was actually sort of working uh, for the wrong reasons. You know, artists sometimes need more approval than we would like to admit. And I wanted to make sure that if I was acting and I was uh, creating art, I was doing it from a place of the joy of creation as opposed to, I need you to validate me. And sort of unplugging and sort of like making sure that my head and my real life, not my persona, my real life was in aligned, made it so that I could come back and be like, oh, I'm a real person and this just happens to be something that I do. My job is no longer defining me. Did you, did winning the award kind of help you reach that realization? Like, cause that's like the ultimate validation, isn't it? Like that's the, the that's the goal for it so many people. You, it is, but it also, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand, like it seems like you just won the best thing in the world. But if you're not, if you don't have a strong foundation, there's so many people who immediately are like, let me put you someplace. Let me, let me do this with your career. I have a vision of what you are. And if you don't know who you are, you get pulled in all of these different directions. And what I found was that I was not nearly as secure as I thought I was. 
And so all of these doors were opening and these opportunity opportunities were arising. And I was, I felt a little bit like a fraud because I was like, I don't know what Karen really wants here. How did you, how did you know you were ready to come back? How did you, when, when did you feel that? Uh, when I had, when I started like having the hunger to create art, felt, you knew. On a, on a large, I was always creating art. Yeah. Even when I went to Madison, I was still like, I was creating pottery, I was writing for the theater, I was directing, but I wasn't doing it in the public eye. Um, right about the time that I was ready to start, I think it was when I went back and did Hamilton. Yeah. And I, I only did Hamilton in Chicago because I was like, that's in my backyard and my buddy wrote it and like, this is cool, I love the show. I was a fan of that show too. So I was like, I get to be Angelica, that's so cool. But when I did that and I was like, I, I forgot the community was so important, then I was like, oh, I'm ready to go back. Yeah. yeah. For sure. We're going to go uh, over to some audience questions in just uh, a second. I know. I'm very excited about that. But, what's up, guys? Uh, you, you did mention your buddy. Uh, and of course, as I yeah. mentioned backstage, uh, In the Heights, one of my favorite shows of all ah. time, and you're outstanding. The, the trailer dropped in December for the <laughs> film. I assume you have like an inside line. Have you seen anything from it? Have you talked to him about it? Yeah, I went to set one day and I saw some stuff. Wow. He like gave, he like, I don't know whose phone it was. I'm assuming it was the director's phone. <laughs> but he was like, you got to watch this. And so I got to see like a little bit of, uh, I saw Biragua and I saw When You're Home. Um, Audible gasps in the audience. Yeah, no, and I was, truthfully, like, there was a part of me that was like, I can't believe I'm actually seeing this. And then I was, like, mad at him for showing it to me because I was like, I want to see it like this. But, it, you know, it's, it's so weird. I'm, my DNA is woven into that show in a way that it felt like, even though none of those people were people that I knew, I was still watching my story. It was, I cry, every time I see it, I cry. Yeah. And I'm not going to be okay when I see it. <laughs> Nobody. You know what I mean? I'm gonna need sure. I'm gonna need a therapy session afterwards, for sure. Uh, well, thank you so much uh, for indulging all of my uh, oddly specific questions. It's no, they're so, awesome. It's, awesome it's questions. Re- thank you. It's really awesome to have you here. Let's get some of the questions from the outside world. This first one's from Twitter. It's at B Way Show. Oh, here we go. With uh, the In the Heights movie coming up, how much nostalgia do you and the original Broadway cast uh, members have? Is is there a group text? Are you communicating? Great question. That day that the uh, the trailer dropped, I every single person that I've worked with reached out in some capacity. We were texting. There, sometimes it was just emojis. Most of them were crying emojis. <laughs> yeah, um, and just also a lot of gratitude. I remember reaching out to Tommy Kale and saying, thank you for amassing this family and creating this thing that lives on. And I'm so proud that it's being introduced in another version to a whole new generation uh, because I think it's a very important story about creating community wherever you are. Um, yeah, these, those are my family members. I mean, I saw one of them, two of them last night. They're like, forever, we'll always be family because of that show. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, thanks for that question. We've got a few in the room. The first one's coming from Megan. Megan, you should have a microphone, what's so up? let's go for it. Hi, Karen. Uh, what's up? Um, so after seeing Moulin Rouge, and as they mentioned before, Satine is such a physically and vocally demanding role. Yeah. Um, what new things about your instrument did you learn through doing Satine that you've had to like go, oh, cool, I have to work on this? And any tips and techniques you have for any actors you've learned through doing Moulin Rouge? Uh, I learned a lot about my using my voice uh, for acting in the sense like changing the tone of my voice to change tactics. So like a lot of the stuff that happens with Christian, I'm playing a version of what I think he wants. So I realized I would change the timbre of my voice. I would change the speed. And that is really taxing for the voice, which I was not aware of. (laughs) And so I have to really be careful how I use my voice outside of the theater. I try not to do a whole lot of singing if it's not for the purpose of the show because of that specifically. And for advice, I would say um, never stop training. Even when you feel like you've made it, keep then go back and train some more. Yeah. Great question. Great Thank answer. Oh, we got time. We're going to do two more. The next one's from Ariana, and you have a microphone as well. Hi, What's up? Hi. hi. Um, I've had the privilege of seeing the show twice from the sparkling diamond circle in the oh. orchestra. Anyway, I bring that up only because I've seen how much of yourself you give to this role emotionally. I'm, 
I know it's a physically demanding role, but for me, what hit home was the emotional aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and I think you really carry the show emotionally. Oh, thank you. So I'm just curious about the mental health aspect of things, because I know when you're sick, when you feel like you're not living up to people's expectations, um, just the pressure of being a performer in general. Uh, how do you how do you handle that? Because I think mental health is such an important aspect of life in general, but especially in your industry. I'm glad that you brought that up. I feel like mental health is one of the components of being an actor that is really underrated. Uh, so, you know, I see a therapist all the time and I knew what the storyline was going to be I knew it was going to be someone uh, falling in love who was unable to really be vulnerable and who would eventually lose the person that they loved and so I worked with my therapist to sort of access things that I from my own life in a safe way so that what you're seeing is uh, really a version of Karen going through something that is very real to her, and that's why it seems very real to you and it resonates. But I worked with someone beforehand so that I could do that safely seven shows a week. Yeah. When, did, uh, when in your career did you have to learn to be able to leave that at the theater and, leave it and walk away from it at the end of the night? People talk about it all the time, but unless you actually rehearse doing that, you don't really actually do it properly. And for me, I had a, a full career, and when I went away to Madison, that was actually one of the things that I decided to work on because I felt like I was bringing too much of myself on stage and taking too much of my character home, and I couldn't figure out the balance. And so working with a therapist and um, being really honest about the stuff that I needed to work on as Karen made it so that when I go to the theater, I'm, it's, there's an open channel and I'm a little bit more of a vessel, and it's a more holistic approach to acting than I've been doing in the past. Very cool. Thank you. Another great question. We'll do one more. This one's from Kim. No pressure. You're last. What's up, Kim? Hey. Hey, hey. Get on up here. Look at you. Look at you. Rouge. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you were in West Side Story. I was, sir. But it's kind of hard when you're in a Broadway show to go see another Broadway show. Yes. Do you have any interest in seeing the current I cannot story. wait. <laughs> I've heard so much about it. I've I've seen some stuff on TV about it. Um, I'm I really I love art in all forms. And what I do appreciate is that this is something that is tried and true, and something that's very close to my heart. And someone is looking at it from a different lens. So I mean, I I don't know what it is because I haven't seen it yet. But I've actually started working on a date that I can actually go and and support these people. Have a great time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for being a great audience, asking awesome questions, and hanging out with us. Thanks to those who tuned in live and sent us some great questions as well. Uh, and thanks to you, Karen. This is wonderful to have you here. Congratulations so again. Uh, if you haven't seen the show yet, I'll say it again. You're missing out. you got to go check it out. Moulin Rouge Musical right now. Go get tickets. Go see it. It, it is uh, an experience and a half. It is so much fun. Uh, everybody, do me a favor. Make a crazy amount of noise. Enjoy me in thanking the thanks, great guys. Karen Olivo. Thanks. Thanks.